Hi, I'd like to take a couple minutes to share with you the history of the Methodist Church. In fact, today it's the United Methodist Church, but it wasn't always so. The Methodist Church really began as a movement in England started by a young Anglican priest by the name of John Wesley. John and his brother Charles were raised in an Episcopal family. Uh, John's father, Samuel, and his mother, Susanna, raised 17 kids. And John uh, was one of the brightest and the best. John was saved as a young child from a burning fire in the family's home. Susanna, his mother, always figured after that that John was saved for something special, and she was right. Uh, John uh, went to college at Lincolnshire College. He started a young men's reading group. They got together to read the classics, and they read a lot of books, and they decided that the Bible was a classic. They should maybe read it. And as they read the scripture, they decided that Christ really called them to be more involved in the life of people than just by going to church. And so they began to do more and more and more in active civic environment. They would uh, get up early, read their Bibles. They would um, go and, and feed the poor. They would uh, take meals to prisoners. They would take care of widows. They were often seen taking care of orphans. But they did all of this in a very organized and disciplined way. And the other students at the college began to notice this. And, and being college students, they were mostly involved in uh, getting drunk and avoiding school. But the uh, this bunch of disciplined holy club guys, they, they just didn't meet that, that bill. And so the rest of the students decided to call them Methodists. It was originally a term that was uh, carried some degree of derision with it. Oh, there goes one of those Methodists. But it was a term that they decided they kind of liked, and so they changed their name to be Methodist Societies. Uh, John remembered that style of leadership and the good camaraderie that they had later on in his life when he began to form the Methodist Societies in England. John uh, graduated from college and went into the Anglican ministry. He was notable for his lack of success. In fact, John just considered himself a huge failure. At one point in time, he was appointed to two or three churches that that all kicked him out in short order because his preaching was so bad and he was such a droll, dry character and, and he just expected so much of his people and they just didn't want to have anything to do with him. Once during his early career, uh, he decided that he wanted to go to America. Maybe since he wasn't any good with converting English people, he might be converting uh, savages. So he came to Savannah, Georgia, which was by that time a fairly civilized town. He was one of several priests at the, at the church, and uh, he really wasn't involved with converting savages. Charles's brother came with him. Charles left right away. It wasn't at all what he wanted. They didn't have a civilization like London. But John, uh, John prevailed, and he stayed there for a little while longer. Eventually, uh, as was John's... Uh, bent, he fell ill and was nursed back to health by a beautiful young woman who he promptly fell in love with, who did not requite his love, and in a rather uh, unfortunate scene, one day John refused her communion. Uh, that was the last straw. The church fathers sent him home. They'd had enough of his image. John returned from America and was really feeling dejected and alone. He uh, was invited to attend a Bible study with a group of Moravians, and they were studying Martin Luther's introduction to the Romans. And when John heard this introduction, he felt his heart strangely warmed, and he believed for the first time that God really loved him, that in Jesus Christ he was saved from his sins and all that was past. And he felt that his life was, was really meaningful to God. He came out of that experience and wrote about it in his journal, but never really touched upon it again. But the truth is it changed his life. Soon after that, George Whitfield, a noted English preacher, invited him to come and take up his preaching station at a field outside of London. And John very reluctantly went to that field. But he was so filled with the new knowledge of God's love in his life that his preaching was on fire. And soon there were thousands of people coming to hear him preach. Whereas he couldn't fill any pulpit in England, he could fill a field. And before the end of the week, there were 10,000 people coming to hear John Wesley preach. John continued this field preaching and eventually moved all over England. And he would go and he would convert people. And when he would leave a town, 
he would try to pull out of that group that he'd converted 10 to 12 people who were able to take on the role of disciplined living as a Methodist. They would study the Bible, they would do good works, they would hold each other to a high standard, and thus the Methodist societies began in England. Now, this was largely a movement of lay ministers. These people weren't ordained and they didn't come to the ministry um, through a lot of education. They came to the ministry out of the love of God and the movement of this fiery young preacher. This movement uh, came to America as a lot of English people were coming across the ocean and finding a new life in America. As you know, in 1776, we declared our independence and became a new nation. And in 1784, that new nation found itself with a group of preachers that really wanted to form a new church. They wrote back to John Wesley and said, we want to start a church. And John said he'd have none of it. He wanted them all to be uh, faithful to the Anglican church, but America was a new nation. It needed a new church. And so in 1784, in Baltimore, Maryland, at a church called the Lovely Lane Chapel, a group of preachers got together and declared themselves the United Methodist Church. And they weren't United Methodist then, they were the Methodist Episcopal Church. Um, they elected bishops, they elected district superintendents, they appointed themselves out to the territories, and they began to ride circuits. They mounted horses and went out all over the new American country and preached the Word of God. And wherever they went, in every town, no matter how big or so, how small, they started a church. And John Wesley's movement continued to grow with people who would take up the cause of reading the Bible and doing good works and making a difference in their community. That's why wherever you go in America, you're liable to find not only a McDonald's on every street corner, but you'll find nearby a Methodist church. We're a church that expands all over the country uh, on every street corner and almost throughout the Midwest and, and the East Coast you'll find Methodist churches. In 1968, we reunited, in a sense, with the German branch of the Methodist Church, which was called the Evangelical United Brethren. And out of that union, we became the United Methodist Church in 1968, a name that we still carry today. And so we have a long and wonderful history, a history of people who fell in love with God and sought to make a difference in their community by studying the Bible and by disciplined living. And that's what Methodists are still about.